Over 30 million tourists are coming to San Diego this year, and we have an organization here in town that's responsible for getting many of them here to town. Today with me is David Peckinpah from the San Diego Convention and Visitors Bureau, who's going to talk a little bit about the tourists coming to San Diego. David, thank you for being here with us today. My pleasure. David, it's been two years since you've taken over the helm of the San Diego Convention and Visitors Bureau as president and CEO. And in your 23 years in the hospitality industry, this is the first time you've been the head honcho of a tourism bureau. What's the biggest thing you've learned so far as at your current position? Well, you know, in two years you learn a lot, but I think if I had to narrow it down to one thing, it would be the importance of communication. Um, in our world, we have so many stakeholders. We have 1,100 members. Uh, we have to deal with the mayor's office, city council, board of directors. The list goes on and on and on. So I think the, the importance of accurate, timely, uh, proactive communications is the number, number one lesson I've, I've learned in that two-year period is it is so important to, to listen and then to proactively communicate. Uh, so uh, definitely the number one lesson I've learned. Your job is to market San Diego to tourists. Who are you targeting and how do you get to them? We have three primary markets that we're going after. You, you mentioned tourists. Uh, we would call that the leisure market. So it's you, your friends, your family, anybody that can come visit San Diego. So that's market one. Uh, market two is a subset of that. It's called the travel trade. And uh, it's all the wholesalers, tour operators, what we call receptive operators. And that's uh, a really an international audience. Anybody that is putting uh, leisure groups together uh, to come into San Diego. We okay. also market to that group. And then the third is meetings and conventions. And that's the corporate and association and incentive and uh, on and on and on as far as target audiences, as far as the, the meeting and convention market. Now, how do you go about getting them here? It's a very complex answer to, to a very simple question. There are so many different ways now to communicate so many different channels uh, that we have to be very targeted, very focused, very strategic. So if I broke down you know, each of the three, you'd have your standard media, PR, uh, direct mail, uh, print advertising. Uh, TV is a big one for us. Uh, we don't have the budget to afford broadcast TV, but we do a lot of cable uh, TV. And we really try to, to go after those niche markets of interests that we know would attract people to San Diego. So food and wine, travel, uh, home and garden, sports, uh, all those types of opportunities on cable, uh, very important for us. Um, Online, I, I can't overstate the, the ever-growing importance of online uh, communications and, and marketing for us. We do a lot with the online travel agencies. Uh, most people would know Orbitz, Expedia, Travelocity, mm -hmm. very big uh, sources of over a million room nights a year and growing significantly. Um, our website is incredibly important. We're getting three and a half to four million visitors a year, unique visitors to that website. And that's a big important thing for our membership. So. Uh, it's, it's an ever-growing uh, ever challenge and uh, one we have to be very flexible uh, about and also very strategic. David, we have more expensive gas issues going on. It's more expensive to fly here. It's more expensive to drive here. So how does your strategy change with the economy to attract the tourists you need? We're, you know, we're always keeping our eye on the ball and, and looking at a lot of data so we understand what, what is driving buying decisions. Um, and gas prices right now certainly are in the news. But what we're finding is they're not really impacting the decision to travel. Uh, you know, the, the overall cost of gas is such a small percentage of an overall vacation that Americans are still continuing to travel. Uh, what we're finding, however, is they want to stay closer to home. So it actually is potentially driving more business to San Diego because we're such a heavy drive market. Almost 70% of our market drives here as opposed to, to fly or take a boat. So um, we're very fortunate in that way because during times like this, Post 9-11, higher gas prices, we actually do better. How we strategically react to that is we focus on those markets. So we put all of our, or more of our energies into those drive markets, LA, uh, Orange County, Riverside, Las Vegas, Arizona. Mm -hmm. So our PR machine, our marketing, all focuses on that. That helps us drive the market. David, there are over 1,800 hotel rooms that are coming on board to San Diego just this year. And that's just half of what's soon gonna be coming to San Diego soon. Are there too many hotel rooms here in town or is this what we really need to grow and develop the industry? You know, it's a, it's a great question because it's, it's always in debate. We're adding about two to three percent inventory a year uh, and that's gonna happen for the next probably five to ten years, so the foreseeable wow. future. It's a big challenge on us, challenge on the convention center because we have to fill those hotel rooms. Um, but we haven't hit the saturation point. We're about 54,000 hotel rooms in the overall county of San Diego. 
Um, you look at Las Vegas, they have over 150,000. Uh, they obviously have something that's driving those hotel rooms. But our occupancy is 71 and a half, 72 percent. So we're doing well. Uh, we, we need additional revenues to continue to drive our marketing. Uh, we need to be aggressive, uh, but we're confident we'll be able to fill those rooms uh, and maintain occupancy levels and hopefully grow them over time. What do you think the hospitality industry in San Diego will look like in 10 years? I mean, it's another great question. Our future is incredibly bright here. Uh, if you look at some of the big initiatives, uh, the Gaylord project down at Chula Vista, uh, hopefully 2012, 13, that might come to fruition. Uh, the new JW Marriott here in East Village, um, probably you know 1,900 plus rooms. Uh, Lane Field, new hotels, uh, improvements to the airport, hopefully a new Charger Stadium. Uh, mm -hmm. The list goes on and on and on. The, the growth of the cruise industry, uh, the growth of the gas lamp district, the, the food and wine reputation of San Diego. Um, you know, we were selected as one of the 10 it cities in 2008 by concierge.com, uh, which is part of uh, Condé Nast. And we're the only North American city selected for 2008. So we're now in the same breath as Sicily and Paris and Oman and Mozambique. And so I think it talks about the emergence of San Diego as a true world-class city. So 10 years from now, I think you're going to see an incredible uh, Embarcadero down by the cruise ship terminal, new hotels, a bustling cruise industry, uh, and an industry here that will continue to drive San Diego. We're the number three industry. Uh, we think we're number one, but in, in actual impact, <laughs> we're number three. Uh, but I think the defense and manufacturing industry should look out because uh, tourism is on the rise. David, thank you for being with us here today. This was great. Good info on information about the tourists coming to San Diego and for people who live right here in San Diego. Catch us next time on San Diego's Best and Brightest. I'm Beck Bamberger.